643. Welcome back to Great Day for this Tuesday, 12th day of August. And being that it's a Tuesday, you guys, you know what it's time for. Dun, 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 dun. Ladies and gentlemen, he needs a cape. He doesn't have one, though, but that's okay. It is Ron the Car Guy. Dun, dun, dun. Man who has all the answers That's to all right. your right. Instead of an S, I'll get an R Whoa, on my shirt. R. Yes. <laughs> hmm. That's a great idea. Could be. Coming could up in the next contract. Could be. Yeah, there you have it. <laughs> Perfect for Halloween, which is coming up. I saw the, the grocery stores. The candy's already out. I know. Did you notice that? Yeah. 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 July 31st, 29th. 29th this year. July 29th. The Halloween. They candy. had to move out the school supplies and put the Halloween candy <laughs> in already. <laughs> poor, poor kids didn't they get their really pencils did. in time. Poor All right. Time to learn us something. That's right. We're going to learn a few things. Um, and and it's a, it's kind of a two-part show, so you'll have to tune in next week for uh -oh. the other uh -oh. half. Uh-oh. Uh, but uh, we, we put together... Uh, is this like when Fonzie jumped the shark where they made you he gives up in the air and <laughs> tune in next week and, oh, man. What the, happens to Fonzie? The yeah. Fonz won't be on next week. Oh, all right. But uh, we, we've put together uh, basically the, the top six questions uh, that, that you should ask your, your mechanic oh, okay. when you take your car in to get it fixed. Okay. Um, and it's one of the things that we, we teach in our uh, ladies' car care clinic that we do a couple times a year as well. Right. And I thought maybe the viewers would like to, to know some of this because these are questions that we get asked or they're, they're problems that we hear about that people ran into when they were getting their car repaired. Okay. And so we'll do three this week, and then uh, you'll have to tune in next week, and maybe Fonzie will be on here to do the other three. <laughs> All right. Hey. Um, but, but anyway, the, the, the first and foremost one is, um, you know, are you familiar with my car? And, and the, you know, there's, you know, obviously if you go to a dealership, they're going to be familiar with the types of cars that they sell. Right. A lot of them are advertising all makes, all models, mm -hmm. service, you know, now. Right. Um, or an independent shop, you go there, and, you know, are they familiar with your type of car? And, and, and most, you know, mechanics, most auto repair shops, they're successful in fixing, you know, Fords and General Motors and, and Jeeps, you know, some of the more common stuff. Uh, but we're seeing a lot more uh, of the, the import cars out on the road, you know, the, the BMWs, the Volkswagen, Audi, you know, even the Toyotas and Hondas, you know, okay. you know stuff can get complex on, on some of the, the, the imported Asian brands. And, and so the, the first thing you want to find out is, you know, are they comfortable and, and are they, you know, able to repair your car? You know, an oil change is one thing, but if the airbag lights on, the check engine lights on, something like that. Um, a, a lot of those vehicles require specialized training, uh, you know, to the technician, and mm -hmm. they require specialized equipment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do they feel comfortable working on your car because you want them to be comfortable right. working on it as well? It'll right. it'll save you money if, if they don't have to spend, you know, an immense amount of time, you know, trying to find the problem if they're familiar with your vehicle. So, that would certainly be the first thing is, um, you know, are they familiar with your car? And or what they're doing on the car, and that's not an embarrassing thing to ask. Like oh. if I came into any me mechanical shop and just said, "Hey, are you familiar with this?" That's not going to make them feel bad or. You well, it, it shouldn't. I, I mean, you know, we, we all know you know what our limits are, and and um, you know it, it shouldn't make them feel bad. And, and if it does, and there's a problem down the road, then you know you tried. Right. Okay. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and like I said, you know, there, there's some things, you know, an oil change, maybe brakes, stuff like that. I mean, that, that's that's pretty. Standard. Exactly, but you know, if you get into an airbag problem or, or something, okay. um, you know, do you feel comfortable working on that? Okay. And if and, and a lot of places I know, you know, will say no, or they'll they'll give you a referral. You know, we don't have the equipment to do that, but maybe take it here. So. So if you ask somebody if they're familiar, say you maybe own a Mercedes Benz and ask them if they're familiar with Mercedes Benz, and they say, oh yeah, I'm I'm really good with Swedish cars, uh, then they <laughs> you probably have a problem. Yeah, okay. Might yeah. be an indicator don't, there. Don't yeah. walk away. Yeah. Run. <laughs> run away. Run away. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, the other thing uh, is, and this kind of goes along the lines with the if, if they're familiar with your car, but uh, it, you know, is the per person working on their car uh, ASC certified? Definitely, you know, no question about it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, you know that that's very very important. What does that stand for? Uh, ASC stands for Automotive Service Excellence. Okay. And uh, in the state of Iowa. Uh, there's no licensing requirements for someone to repair cars. Oh. There's no oversight. Hmm. Um, I could hire Jason this afternoon and say, try to rebuild this transmission. Okay. And, and, and so what you want to do is, is make sure that the person that's working on the car is qualified to work on it. And, and, and there's different organizations, but the, the most nationally known one is ASE, Automotive Service Excellence. And, and nationwide, they, they certify technicians. 
Um, and it isn't a one-time thing. You have to go back and get recertified for your different statuses and stuff within mm. that. And, and so that's a really good gauge. And, and the reason I started the question out is the person working on my car, ASE certified, right. you, you can have an auto repair shop with 10 mechanics and one guy can be ASE certified and they'll give you the sign to hang up. I was going to say, there is a document that goes a along with it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, it, it, exactly. And the document shows, you know, that person is certified. And there's eight different areas that you can be certified in as well. And that document will also show what areas they're certified in. So, you know, if, if somebody's certified in brake repair uh, but not air conditioning, that might not be the guy to be working on your air conditioning system. Right. So, you know, is, is the person working on my car ASE certified and is he certified in the area that the, the car needs to be repaired in? Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, that, that's a great question to ask. And again, um, a, a shop should have no problem, you know, showing you their credentials or their certificate. They actually should be proud of it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it shows that that person isn't there for a job, he's there for a career. Mm -hmm. He took the time to, to go become certified and right. stuff. and cares about it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and, and then the, the, the third one that I want to talk about today, and, and this one, um, we, we bump heads into it in the repair industry uh, quite often. Uh, does the estimate you gave me to fix my car include all taxes and fees? And, and, and we see this over and over again. You'll have people that are, that are trying to shop an auto repair, which, right. which is difficult at best. And, and the, the, they'll call a place and they'll quote them, you know, parts and labor, but they don't quote them sales tax. Right. Uh, maybe there's a shop supply or an environmental fee on there. And, and, and we see, the, I've seen bills where that's added 12 to 15% to the bottom line. Wow. So all of a sudden you've got somebody that needs a, a $500 repair and they're not quoting them the other 15%. And, and then they go in to pick the car up and, and have what we call the five o'clock surprise. They're there at five <laughs> o'clock to pick it up. And surprise, no. it's considerably more. Yeah, do you want uh, your car? Yeah, yeah. and, and it, I have no idea why places do that because your, your software will include that. I mean, the only reason you're asking how much, Lou, is because you want to know how much to bring. Right. Yeah. You know, if it's $538.16 with everything, then just right. it sh you should be told 538.16 and not, not the big surprise or about 500 or around mm -hmm. 450. Well, you want to know if you can pay for it today or if you should wait a week to the till payday and you know you don't yeah. exactly mm -hmm. exactly bring my checkbook or bring a credit card or bring cash I mean yeah you right. just need to that's know that's true yeah. exactly and, and that's that's the only reason people are asking is they, they just want to know you know how am I going to pay for it and 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 when am I going to pay for it so uh, but you, you we it's it's very common we that, that that it doesn't include that stuff and uh something that's interesting that a lot of people don't know is uh in the state of Iowa and this is a law uh, your final repair bill has to be within 10% of the original estimate oh. unless you're contacted before the additional work is done. Okay. Interesting. And, and it's not unusual in the auto repair industry to get into doing a repair and, and all of a sudden you find something else that you couldn't mm -hmm. see or there's a bolt that breaks that needs additional labor to remove it or, or something along that lines. And, and the, the original estimate can change. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the law in the state of Iowa is they need to stop the repair, contact you, and make you aware of that change if it exceeds 10% of the original repair. Okay. So you shouldn't be hit with a surprise where you come in and you were told $300 and you come to pick up the car and it's $400 and they're like, oh, well, yeah, we got into it and we found out it needed this or it needed right. that. Um, that that's, a, that's a state law is you're entitled to a written estimate. Uh, and it, it has to be within 10% unless you're contacted before they do the additional work, not mm -hmm. at the end. Well, I so, imagine that happens to you guys a lot when some idiot like me thinks it's one problem and it's, and it's a totally different problem, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And cars are complex. I mean, you can't expect people driving them to, to know what's wrong. You can and analyze them when they come in because if they could do that, they'd fix it themselves. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Just come in and tell us what the symptom is or show us the symptom. You know, there's, you know, even having been in this industry for over 30 years, I mean, I can go out and drive a car that's, that's not functioning properly. And, and in my mind, it feels like it's a transmission problem. And you get it into the shop and you hook the computer up to it and stuff and you find out it's you know, something in the fuel system completely different. Mm. 
And so you can't expect you know people to know what's wrong with their car. I mean that's what what you know equipment and training's for. So. All right. So this is a first of a two-part series from Ron the Car Guy, is seen exclusively on Great Day. Fonzie's no. in the air. He just came off the ramp. Now coming up next week, Ron will answer the additional three questions that have perplexed him for many many years. But anyway. And I did I did want to touch on one more thing yes. because I've had I've had at least a dozen questions since we did this a couple weeks ago. Mm. Uh, people are emailing me like, what was that product you talked about to get oh. rid of? Oh, yeah. Oil stain on my driveway or my right. garage, mm -hmm. and and it's uh, it's an aerosol product. It's uh, we call it Brake Clean. Brake Clean. Yep. You can go to any parts store. Uh, it's called Brake Clean. Brake Clean is actually a brand. brand. Brake Clean with a K. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but but go and ask for a can of Brake Clean, and uh, that is the the degreasing product. You just saturate the oil spot, and it goes away. And and, and as you had mentioned when we talked about it, buy the cheapest one. Brand doesn't matter. Get the matter. generic. It's all the same stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So brake clean it's is like what you want. like getting your generic drugs. Exactly. Okay, same type of thing. So wonderful. Good job, my friend. If people want to ask you a question, how do they do so? Uh, they can go to askronthecarguy.com or you can contact me at westsideautopros.com. I'll answer all your questions. Thank you, sir. You're See you welcome. next week with the rest of the story. This is Great Day.